ಕರುಣಾಕರ ಸೂರೀಂದ್ರ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಾಂ ನವನೀತ ನಟೋತ್ತಂ ಸಾಂ ಗುರು ಪಂಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರೀಯನ್ನು ಮಹಾ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೈಂಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅವತಾರಾಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಮಾಟಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ರೈಟ್ ಪಾತ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ not only chooses to come down himself but also involves all his divine retinue in this work there are many celestials known as nityasuris at the abode of lord shriman narayana shri vaikuntha and the lord also adorns a lot of divine ornaments and carries divine weapons he involves the nityasuris the divine ornaments and the divine weapons in this act of taking incarnations so he sends these also as avataras the incarnations of the divine weapons divine ornaments and some nityasuris are called as alvars divine weapons are known as divya yudhas divine ornaments are known as divya abharanas and the incarnations of these divya yudhas and divya abharanas are known as divya suris or alvars the term alvar refers to the one who is deeply engrossed all the var alvar what are these people deeply engrossed in they are deeply engrossed in devotion to the lord and they come down to earth to show the path of devotion which is the right path to follow in life alvars are 12 in number and the main amongst these 12 the head of alvars is known as nammalvar nammalvar is an incarnation of the commander in chief of lord narayana's army known as vishwaksena vishwaksena came down as nammalvar say the scriptures and a few puranas like the bhavishyat purana also believe that the lord himself came down as an amsha avatara in the form of nammalvar the story of the birth of nammalvar traces back to the start of this kali yuga in southern india on the banks of the river tamraparni there is a beautiful township called as tirukkurugur there was a devoted person named kari in this place who got wedded to another devoted lady named udayanangai for some time kari and udayanangai were childless so they went to tirukkurungudi which is present near the southernmost tip of india almost and sought the lord nambi for a child the lord very graciously appeared in the dream of kari and told him that he himself would come as an amsha avatara to this couple and at this time it is said that the lord ordered adisesha to appear in the form of a tamarind tree at the tirukkurugur temple such that the tree would be situated in the northern direction to the main sannidhi of lord adipiran of tirukkurugur adisesha obeyed and took the form of a tamarind tree and suddenly appeared there inside the tirukkurugur temple this led to the astonishment of all residents of tirukkurugur but they knew that something divine was going to happen from this divine appearance of this divine tree the divinity happened very soon on the 43rd day of this kali yuga in a pramadi year when the season was spring or it was vasanta rutu when the solar calendar showed the month of vishakha and also the star of vishakha and when the lunar calendar showed the full moon day purnami and when the day of the week was a friday 
Kari and Udayanangai were blessed with a divine child. This child was very different from any normal child. Why was he different? Because as soon as the child was born, it did not even let out a cry. It did not open its eyes. When Udayanangai tried feeding the child, it would just not move. The child just lay motionless where it was placed and got picked up when somebody tried to pick it up. It remained like this for days together despite medical practitioners trying to treat it. Then Kari realized that the Lord had told him that there would be a divine appearance of his in the form of his child. So he said, let me leave everything to the Lord. And he carried his child to the temple of Tirukurugur and placed him near the Sanadhi of Adi Piran. This child, which was motionless till this moment, now caught up momentum and started crawling towards the tamarind tree. The tamarind tree, which is the incarnation of Adi Sesha. The child crawled up to the tree and sat down taking up the Padmasana position. It appeared with great radiance at that moment. The parents realized that indeed they had been blessed with a different child, with a unique child. And so they named him the different one or Maran. This child was like this because he remained unaffected by something called Shatha. It is said in the scriptures that a child in the womb of a mother is all-knowing in the sense it has the knowledge of its previous births and a lot more. But when the child comes in contact with a particular kind of breeze called as Shatha, a Vayu called as Shatha, all this knowledge or Jnana is gone. And the child becomes totally ignorant about anything. It becomes something that knows hardly anything other than probably drinking milk. But this child, Maran, was not affected by Shatha. When Shatha tried to come near Maran, he just said, whom? in an angry manner. And Shatha just ran away. Shatha could not affect Maran and because of this Maran came to be known as Shatakopan, the one who angered the Vayu called Shatha, the one who got angry on the Vayu called Shatha. So thus Shatakopa sat under the tamarind tree with great radiance on his face in Padmasana, having a Jnana Mudra on the right hand, placing his left hand on the lap, having his head and neck absolutely straight and sat motionless like a picture perfect lamp. Like this, he sat for days together and Goddess Lakshmi saw this from Sri Vaikuntha and she ordered Vishwaksena to go and give teachings of mantras that is Mantropadesha to Shatakopa. Shatakopa himself was an incarnation of Vishwaksena, but here he had to be initiated through an Acharya or a Guru and Vishwaksena again took up the role of the Acharya of Shatakopa. So Vishwaksena on the order of Lakshmi Devi came down and gave the Upadesha of Mantras to Shatakopa. And his radiance on the face increased because of this. After this, 16 years passed with Shatakopa being in the same position under the tamarind tree, also known as the Tirupuli Alvan. After 16 years, there happened an incident in North India which has an interesting relation to this story. At Ayodhya, there was another Alvar named as Madhurakavi Alvar who suddenly saw a radiance appearing from the southern direction. 
This was a radiance which was observed in bright daylight. Despite sunlight being there, this was distinctly visible. And this radiance continued to be there even after sunset. Like this, the radiance was observed by Madhura Kavi Arvar for days together and he got curious about the source of this radiation. So he started walking in the direction of this radiance. He started traveling southwards. He visited many shrines on the way like Chitrakuta, Puri, Tirumala, Sri Rangam. And he still found that the light was coming from further south. Finally, when he arrived at Tirukurugur, he found that this radiance was at the place where he was. It was not in any other direction. So he inquired with the people of Tirukurugur as to whether the place had any miraculous happenings. People told him about Shatakopa being under the tamarind tree. Madhuraka Vyalvar went to the tamarind tree, saw this divine form and felt like asking a question. He said, Setradu vaitril siriyadu pirandal yettai tindru yenge kidakku. This is a very philosophical question. When Madhura Kavi Arvar tried to ask, if a soul enters a body, what would it have to consume and where would it lie? This is the interpretation of the question given by Madhura Kavi Arvar. Namma Arvar or Shatakopa for the first time after 16 years, opened his mouth to answer this question. And the answer was, meaning the soul resides inside the body and experiences joy or sorrow as a fruit of actions performed or karma. This was a very apt philosophical answer for the intellectual philosophical question put forth by Madhura Kavi Arvar. Listening to this answer, Madhura Kavi Arvar fell at the feet of Shatakopa and pleaded that he should be taken up as his sishya. Shatakopa agreed and Madhura Kavi Arvar became the disciple of Shatakopa and Shatakopa was then blessed with divine vision by Lord Narayana who came along with Lakshmi Devi seated on the Garuda. After this, lords of the 108 shrines called as Divvideshas also came in line and gave divine vision or darshan to Nammarvar. After this, Shatakopa or Nammarvar started composing beautiful verses on the Lord. He was very fond of the Lord and so was the Lord fond of him. That's exactly why he was called as Nammarvar too. Shatakopa was fondly called as Nammarvar by the Lord of Sri Rangam who is fondly called as Namperumal. The word Nam means the one who belongs to us, ours. He is our Arvar, said the Lord who is called as our Perumal. This essentially means that Nammarvar was very, very close to the heart of the Lord and he was extremely affectionate towards him because he had come to serve the purpose of the Lord who wants to be our Lord or Nampermat. He wants to come to us. The Lord wants to come to us mortals and this Arvar, Nammarvar is paving a way for it. So, he was addressed very fondly as Nammarvar by Namperumal. Now, this Nammarvar has composed four works which are known to be the essence of the four Vedas. His first work is the Tiruvirittam, which is the essence of the Rig Veda and comprises of a hundred verses or Pasurams. The next is Tiruvasariyam, comprising of seven Pasurams and is known as a gist of the Yajur Veda. The third is the Periya Tiruvandadi, comprising of 87 verses and is known to be a gist of the Atharvana Veda. The final work, the grand work of Nammarvar is known as the Tiruvaimuri, which comprises of 1102 verses and is known to be the essence or the saram of Samaveda. Swami Deshikan very beautifully 
compiles up the compositions of nammalvar in his verse of the prabandha saram when he says munnuraitha teruvirutham nooru paattum murayil varum aasiriyam elu paattum manyanar porul periya teruvandaadi maravada padi 87 paattum பின்னுரைத்ததோர் திருவாய் மொழி எப்பொழுதும் பிழையர் ஆயிரத்தொரு நூற்றி ரெண்டு பாட்டும் இந்நிலத்தில் வைகாசி விசாகன் தன்னில் எழில் குறுகை வருமாறாயிரங்கு நீயே சோ இன் டோட்டல் நம்மாழ்வார் ஹஸ் கம்போஸ்ட் தௌசண்ட் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் பாசுரம்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஃபோர் தௌசண்ட் திவ்ய பிரபந்தம்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் த மேக்சிமம் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் தேர் ஹவ் பீன் வேரியஸ் கமெண்ட்ரிஸ் டு த திருவாய் மொழி and the commentary to the tiruvai mori is termed as bhagavad vishayam which is also considered as an important text to be studied in the lifetime of a shri vaishnava it is a kalakshepa grantha regarding the works of nammalvar with great respect was profound at his times and still continues today kambana talwan or kamba who is famously known as the composer of the ramayana in tamil very beautifully says that the tiruvai mori is the one which can grant you all the four purusharthas namely dharma artha kama and moksha essentially it can grant you anything that you desire from mundane things up to eternal happiness that is moksha following the tiruvai mori swami deshikan has composed the dramidopanishad saram and dramidopanishad tatparya ratnavali in sanskrit which gives us a gist of the meanings of tiruvai mori in the deva bhasha known as sanskrit similarly in his paduka sahasram swami deshikan has composed an entire paddhati devoted to nammalvar known as the samakhya paddhati the teachings shown in the tiruvai mori and other works of nammalvar actually give us guidance to lead life in the path of righteousness and are certain to navigate us to the path of moksha also these verses are laded with devotional experience there cannot be a soul who does not get a tear of devotion from his eyes after listening to the interpretation of nammalvar's tiruvai mori such was the greatness of nammalvar and deeply devoted to him was madhura kavi alvar who composed the kanninun sirittamb which is a devotional set of 11 verses dedicated to his acharya nammalvar it is said that once when all the divya prabandhams got lost it is this kanninun sirittamb which helped in reviving back all the divya prabandhams and when they were revived back how did they come back to the world who taught them back to the world it was none other than nammalvar himself who is present in the archa form in tirukurugur today so let us all pray to the holy feet of nammalvar and sing his praise always நம்மாழ்வார் திருவடிகளே சரணம்